Hi everyone. Today our goal is to understand a little bit about organic compounds. These are compounds that are usually found in nature but also man-made materials such as plastics. Organic compounds, uh, you may have heard the term organic maybe in the context of buying organic food, but for a chemist, uh, all food is organic because it contains proteins and lipids and carbohydrates and these are all things that are made out of organic compounds. Uh, for chemists that means that these are molecules with generally with carbon and other uh, other elements as well like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and so forth. Uh, these compounds are usually uh, fairly large compared to what we've been learning. We've been learning you know one central atom with things attached to it um, these are molecules with many central atoms. So here's an example of uh, methamphetamine, for example. Here uh, we've got a six-membered ring with a chain that has a nitrogen, and there's all these hydrogens in there that are not shown. So this is what we call a skeletal structure. It's how chemists communicate with each other normally. Um, and the way that you read this diagram is every point where the lines meet and every end is a carbon. So if we look at this molecule here, you've got carbon, uh, let's see here, carbon, 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 everywhere the lines meet, and then also at the end of a point, so that, that's a carbon as well. There's a point here, but there's a nitrogen there, so there's no carbon here, it's a nitrogen instead. Uh, and then we fill in with hydrogen such that every carbon has four bonds because that's its bonding pattern is to have four bonds to make its octet. So one, two, three, so this carbon needs a hydrogen, this carbon needs a hydrogen, all of them need a hydrogen here in order to make four bonds, except this one already has four bonds. This one needs two hydrogens, and this one needs three hydrogens, this one needs a hydrogen, and this one needs three hydrogens. If you have other uh, atoms besides carbon, like nitrogen or oxygen, they have to show their hydrogen because they may or may not have it and we have to assume that um, it's gonna be shown. So here's the structure again, but with everything drawn out, it's called the expanded structure. So you can count how many carbons and hydrogens there are in this molecule um, down here. Here's serotonin, which is responsible for making us feel happy. And serotonin here, you can, you can draw in or try to visualize all those carbons. Here's a carbon, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 carbons, but if you're not, if you're not seeing it, go ahead and just um, uh, write it in there. Carbon, 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 carbon. Everywhere those lines meet, a carbon is implied. And then in addition to that, um, you need to think about those hydrogens as well. Okay, so hydrogen-wise, uh, let's think of every carbon as making four bonds. One, two, three. This carbon here must have a hydrogen. Oh, not there, sorry. Okay, so every time I see a carbon with less than four bonds, I'm going to draw in a hydrogen or more, like this one up here has two hydrogens, and this one must have two hydrogens. So when you count all those up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so eight that I drew in here, and then also nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve on this nitrogen, so twelve total. How many nitrogens? I just see these two nitrogens here. And then how many total lone pairs? This is where we need to think about our bonding pattern. So in the octet rule, this nitrogen has two, four, six covalent, uh, six electrons in covalent bonds, so it has a lone pair. Uh, this nitrogen also, two, four, six, so three bonds, six electrons. We need two more to get its octet. Carbons all have four bonds, so they are fine with their octet. And then this oxygen needs to have a lone pair as well, two lone pairs. Okay, so in terms of how many total lone pairs, one, two, three, four lone pairs. 
All right, so when we say implied, we mean the carbons and hydrogens are not explicitly shown, so we need to uh, think of them as being there. Uh, drawing simple organic structures then, we have an expanded structure um, where every bond is showing. So for this structure, C4H10, here's how the four carbons are um, spelled out, and then the hydrogens that are needed to make an octet for all those carbons. The expanded structure would be one, two, three, four, and you show all the hydrogens. The reason why uh, it's zigzag over here is because carbon's tetrahedral. So, um, and if you think about the tetrahedral nature, then you're going to end up with zigzags and dashes and wedges, because that's that's the three D version is where you have those hydrogens are like that. So that's if you had a model kit, you would see that zigzag nature. So we just draw it that way to remind ourselves that it's tetrahedral. But you can zigzag this, or you can just leave it like that, too. That's fine. Skeletal structure shorthand means that we're going to imply the carbons and hydrogens. So I don't want to actually show them, but I do need to have the lines showing for that carbon skeleton. Okay, so from this, you can figure out, oh, there's one, two, three, four carbons, and enough hydrogens, three, two, two, and three, for those carbons to have an octet. When you do that with oxygen, or nitrogen, or other elements besides carbon and hydrogen, you have to make sure that you're showing those, and you have to make the hydrogens explicit on those atoms as well. So these hydrogens don't need to be shown, but the hydrogens on other elements besides carbon needs to be shown. So for example, let's work backwards here. So the condensed structure is where you show the carbons and hydrogens. So I'm going to take this molecule, but I'm going to show the carbons and hydrogens there. OK, and then for each of those, uh, I can just draw CH3, or I can spell them out. This is a condensed structure, so I'm just going to squeeze them in here and not show the bonds. And then I write H over here because the H is bonded to the C, which is bonded to the C. So it looks backwards, but either way is fine. You can write CH3 and squeeze the H's in here as well. Oh, I forgot this OH group, so I need to uh, fix that. Okay, so at this carbon, something's going on. I've got a bond to oxygen, OH. And again, it doesn't matter which side I write the H on, but I'll do it there. Then this carbon needs one more bond, so it's, I'm going to show an H there. You can draw it out, or you can just write an H right here. Okay, expanded structure would be just to expand that out and show every single hydrogen-carbon bond. And the chemical formula is C. We go in alphabetical order usually, so C, then H, then O. And then there's one, two, three, four, five Cs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve H's, and one O. So instead of putting one, we just leave it. So C five H twelve O. Okay, and then with double bonds um, over here, just uh, note that there's nothing else on this O except for the lone pairs. So that's how it gets its octet. And same with this oxygen, that's how it gets its octet is through those lone pairs. All right. Good luck trying these out, um, and then we'll move into f functional groups in the next video.